Hey guys, today I wanted to talk to you about a few things that you wanna do inside your Blab2 station that would definitely boost your marks. So without further ado, let's get going. The first thing you wanna do inside the Blab2 station is be spontaneous. Even if you have a structure in mind, a structure is not about a set of questions that you put in order, it's about a mental map that helps you lead the conversation. So while it's very important to have a structure, it's also equally important to react to the patient, cause this will show them and the examiner that your approach is patient-centered. So remember, do not focus on what question you need to ask next and get stuck inside your own mind, cause this will hinder your interaction with the patient and hence you will lose marks. The second advice that I have for you today is let the patient talk. You would be amazed by how much information they give you, things that you might have not even prepared in your questions. So sit tight, listen carefully and give them the opportunity to speak. And always remember this rule, you need to listen more than you need to talk. And trust me, some rule players would save you a ton of time. Advice number three, be organized and signpost before changing the subject. So assuming you are my patient, let me give you an example. Now that we have discussed your symptoms, I would like to know some more details about your lifestyle. This way the patient would be able to keep up with you in the conversation and wouldn't get lost. Number four, be flexible. Get out of your own set of questions that you have in mind and always react to the patient's answer. For example, if you asked the patient about smoking and he said, yes doctor, I do smoke. Then you moved on to the next question and the next question, the patient would feel like you're just crossing off items on a checklist. What you need to do instead is reflect on the patient's answer. So you'll be my patient again and let's have an example. So John, now I would like to ask you some questions about your lifestyle. By any chance, do you smoke? Now we will assume that you said, yes doctor, I do smoke. Well, if you ever do consider cutting down on smoking, we have some great alternatives that we could offer to help you. It literally wouldn't take 10 seconds from your consultation, but it would make the examiner feel impressed. Number five, always listen to the patient's concerns and ideas regarding his illness. And if the patient does not bring it up, you need to do. This psychosocial aspect of any illness would make your consultation feel more humane. And it would ultimately boost your marks. Speaking of boosting your marks, you wouldn't get more marks by listing all what you know about a condition. Cause you have already tested that in Blab 1. Here, you wanna focus more about how to deliver the information to the patient in the easiest and the simplest manner. Number six, every now and then in the conversation, check that the patient is following you. You could be giving too much information for the patient to process. So a gentle question like, are you following me would be a great gesture to the examiner and the patient. Cause as we said, it's all about a patient centered approach. I hope this video was helpful to you and I'll be uploading more tips about Blab2. So make sure you stick around and subscribe to the channel. Best of luck in your exam and I will see you next video.